Okay. I just want to read from um, from um, Colossians. Um, sorry, from, from Philippians chapter four and um, verses twelve and thirteen. Right. Um, I know how to be abased. I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay, So very inspiring words uh, by Paul uh, to the Philippine church. And you know, right through, he's, he will be writing about rejoicing in the Lord always. And you know, right through whatever they're going through, uh, he says, rejoice in the Lord, be anxious for nothing, and all that. And... Uh, and this particular, these two verses talk about uh, you know, contentment. Right? Even as we start this month, uh, I know we started the month a couple of days back, but um, you know, it, it's good to think about contentment and say, you know, am I content in the Lord? Right? In terms of material things, in some, in terms of uh, um, you know, the natural things that uh, the Lord has provided and what I have. Uh, and and even what I don't have, am I content? Okay, so it's not to say that uh, we should not work towards, plan towards, or be ambitious about you know about achieving things, but um, re regarding everything that we have at present, you know, are we content, or is there a discontent? You know, um, when it comes to especially when it comes to material things um, and so on, like um, I think we read in the book of um, Haggai, right? Um, the last verse where um, let's just read that also. The last chapter. Can somebody read? Yeah, last few verses. Oh, sorry, not Haggai. I'm sorry. Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Um, okay, I, I'll just read it. Habakkuk chapter 3, uh, verse 17, right? 17 and 18. Um, though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, no, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, Though the flock may be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Okay. So Habakkuk 3, 17, 18. Uh, and 19, he says, The Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet and he will make me walk on my high hills. Okay. So, so, um, uh, very uh, good perspective for us to have a mindset for us no matter what we are going through to say you know the lord is my salvation the lord will cause me to walk on my eye it's, you know he he is my strength he is my uh, he is my refuge he is my everything um, and he will cause ability in in me to increase and change and so on right and the same kind of perspective that paul has is in, in all things you know i know how to be how to be there and I know that I can do all things through Christ Jesus. You know, if we would have that, it's a it's a place of great strength. You know, if we would have that minds mindset, it's a it's a great strength, right? No matter what is happening, to be to be able to say that I can do all things through Christ Jesus. You know, I I will I know how to be content in all situations. You know, uh, like for example. You know, if it means a situation like where you have to eat dal rice and pickle the rest of your life, okay, <laughs> you, know, you know, can I still be content, right? Can I still be content? Uh, so that's what Paul is saying. You know, in all things, I can be. You know, I know that the Lord will cause me to, you know, increase, etc. But can I be content uh, for the sake of whatever, you know, the assignment that I'm on? The call of God. Can I be content? Right. So it's a it's a great place for us to be, and it's a it's a great place for us to reach, to mature, to reach in Christ. Right. So let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that uh, you're the God who provides. 
uh, for all our needs according to your riches and glory. We thank you. And Lord, we thank you that, um, Lord, you desire, God, for each one of us to reach that place of strength, God, that place of assurance in you, Lord Jesus, where we can say, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. I know how to abound and I know how to be abased. Uh, though there may not be any crop in the field or may, there may not be fruit in the vine, yet I will joy, I will rejoice in the Lord because he is my strength and my refuge. And Lord, I pray that uh, that each one of us will have that perspective, that mindset, that place of assurance and strength of Father God. And then we know that we will be unshakable, O oh God, no matter what storm, no matter what mountains we face, Lord, no matter what the enemy brings away, we will continue to be strong, pressing forward, not distracted or not discouraged in any way, O oh God. And Lord, we pray that you would Lord, uh, that we ask for strength to be imparted in the inner man even today, God, even as we, Lord, start this new month and even as we go through this new month, oh God, I pray that, Lord, this will be our focus, God, that um, that, they will, the, that we will be edified in the inner man, that we will be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and we will continue to stand, oh God. And um, and and even as you called us, Lord, to, to walk and run and soar, oh God, uh, in, in the things that you've called us to, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. 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 You know, I just wanted to say that, you know, when we live Christ-centered lives, you know, that's an amazing, uh, amazing place to be. Uh, many times we, we think we live Christ-centered lives. We think we live, you know, word-centered lives. Uh, but are we really seeking first the kingdom of God? You know, um, because culturally we can be, we can say, okay, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, and not really do that. But when we actually live that, you know, when there's no other agenda, but when we are seeking Christ, then all other things will fall in place, and we'll be living, you know, word-centered, Christ-centered lives, right? And okay, I think uh, Ravali is traveling today. Ravali, all the best. Mission trip uh, to Rajasthan, I think today. Uh, Thanks, Pastor. Okay, so we'll uh, pick up from where we start, where we left last class. Um, we're looking at um, as a New Testament minister, right? Um, how um, you know, uh, there's just a ministry of the word as New Testament ministers. The kind of things that we have um, and the resources that we are given, the place that we have in Christ, um, which we need to really, you know, step into, walk into. And we were looking at revelation, right? That we receive revelation and we share that revelation. Uh, when we're talking about revelation, we saw that you know it's not that every time um, you know we open our mouths that there has to be something fresh, something totally new that we have not shared before, right? It's it's not it's not that we don't have to put ourselves under unnecessary pressure that way. Yes, we can have the expectation. Yes, Lord, you know, show give give me something that um, that I need to share, and what is it that you that you want me to share? But um, uh, we need to understand that emphasizing or reiterating the same thing that the Lord has spoken before is also a revelation, right? It's also something that the Lord wants to do in the lives of people, like build strength, reiterate, uh, remind the people of the things that he had already spoken before, okay? Um, okay, so then we see, um, you know, about receiving revelation and preaching that, we see in Galatians 1, where Paul says that, um, uh, you know, the son, when God chose to reveal the son in him, then he immediately preaches the gospel. You know, that's what we see. That was his testimony. Galatians 1 and verse 15. Uh, but when, when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach. Okay, to reveal His Son, that I might preach Him among the Gentiles. So, uh, what precedes preaching? It's revelation, right? Revelation of of the person of Christ. Revelation of the truth, right, from the Word. So, uh, um, so we see that there is revelation, and then there is preaching, followed by preaching. So He says, um, "Call me through His grace to reveal His Son in me, that I might." Preach him among the Gentiles. Okay, so revelation precedes um, the communication or preaching of the message. Okay, and uh, also there is a boldness when we speak. 
out of a personal walk with God. Um, you know, very interesting when um, Peter and John are in the temple, and we see that in Acts chapter four. Um, okay, Acts chapter four. This is the same same Peter who ran away. Now he's filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, same Peter who denied Jesus. Now he's standing boldly and he's preaching. Right, he, and they and they've just performed the you know they've just healed the person um, who who could not walk, and all that is happening. So Acts chapter four. Uh, verse 13, right? We see that now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, okay? So Peter is talking, he is, uh, he's quoting scripture, right? Right from the time when he was filled with the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we see him doing that. And in Acts chapter 4 also, he's, he talks about that. Um, uh, in verse 11, you know, he's quoting from Psalms and and he's saying, you know, that this is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone, etc. You know, there's salvation in no other name and all that. Then when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated men, you know, they were not trained the way the, they were, um, they marveled. And this is the realization, this is the understanding, that they realized that they had been with Jesus. Right. So there's a difference um, in in the communication of the, our message when we have spent time with the Lord. There's something that happens, right? When we are in the presence of God, of course, the Bible talks about various, you know, this, our strength being renewed and so on, but, uh, and, uh, you know, how we, uh, when we see the glory of God, we are being changed from glory to glory and so on. But there's something that happens. There is an anointing that we receive, um, and there's an impartation that we receive from no other by no other means, right? Just by being in the presence of the Lord, and we see that is God's original intent. In uh, intent, the Lord's original intent. Like if you look at, um, let's say, Mark chapter three, um, Mark chapter three, and um, I think it's verse fourteen. If you, yeah, Mark chapter three and verse fourteen, thirteen and fourteen. Then he went up on the mountain, and called to him those he himself wanted. And they came to him. Then he appointed twelve. And look at you know what he says. Um, what is written there that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach. Okay, so that's the order. He's saying you know that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach. And uh, and here we see the testimony of that happening, right? So they saw, and then they perceived. When they saw the boldness, they perceived that these men have been with Jesus. Right, so that's the conclusion they come to. Okay, so um, so that's the same thing that happens to us. That there is a boldness in our preaching. There is an authenticity and realness in the words that we speak. It need not be something very complex. It need not be something very uh, you know uh, 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 very very uh, uh, profound. Even in the simple things, like there is the the touch of the Holy Spirit that transforms people's lives. And there is a witness of the Holy Spirit in people's heart. And then they realize that this is it comes from a place of intimacy. Okay. So that's uh, there's no other um, you know, there's there's no replacing or there's no substituting that right? from when it comes from that place of intimacy. And um and and also, you know, we see uh, the Lord Jesus saying, um, John chapter 15, right? I'm the wine, you are the branches. And so that uh, we realize that the Zoe, God kind of life, God wants us to experience, right? And we are one spirit with him. But, you know, as, as human beings, we have our free will. We have a choice. We have a choice to move away. We have a choice to stay. So as long as we are in that place of intimacy, you know, the Lord is saying, if you abide with me, verse 7, right? John 15, verse 7, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Okay. And um, verse six also he says, if anyone does not abide, and and you know the the usefulness is vastly diminished, and our own spiritual, our own life, you know, it's like it just withers away. So we we see this. There is fruitfulness uh, when we abide in the vine, and that's what the Lord has called us to. Okay. So. Um, 
yeah the, the other thing that we see is continuous revelation gives birth to continual ministry okay so which means that this abiding and this receiving uh, and uh, the outflow of that is something that needs to become a lifestyle for us right not only when we have we and we are scheduled to lead the devotion or when we are scheduled to preach right um because it can very quickly go down to that level right it can quickly go down to that level ministry can actually very quickly slide down to that level um where the only time we you know you spend time is to prepare for something and the thing is it is demanding where maybe you, you are preaching like three times four times in a week but it should not be that it comes to that place of you know we are preparing we are spending time only to prepare for uh you know uh, sharing right that um, that we spend time uh, uh because that is what we here we are we are appointed for that we might be with him okay um and then the the fact is that as we receive the revelation continual revelation is what gives birth to the ministry you know when we serve uh, um the lord and there is that freshness and there is a impact okay okay the other thing we see is that without anointing enlightenment and revelation the exposition of the scripture or the sharing of other uh, uh, teaching of the scriptures is um yes it ha it, it it does happen but it does not have the desired impact of fruitfulness okay so um you know a lot of uh, unwanted things happen because of that a lot of strife can happen a lot of uh, work of the flesh uh, happens because of that right so uh, it's the revelation it's the anointing that uh, we need to have uh, as we preach right okay so so these are some things to keep in mind as as new testament believers right um, that all of us are called to share to preach the gospel uh, in whatever realm and, uh, and this is something that needs to be a lifestyle for us right okay okay any questions anything that you might want to share yeah. no okay okay so let's look at second corinthians 3 okay second corinthians 3 verses 1 to 12 where paul writes about um, about him himself his team okay to the corinthian church and uh, and we can learn something here about uh, the kind of ministry that they did okay the kind of ministry and uh, we learn about how they related to the people we learn about their dependence on the holy spirit in order to transform and change lives and so on right okay so second corinthians 3 verse 1 uh, verses 1 1 to 12 okay let's just read through it uh, or do we sorry do we begin again to commend ourselves or do we need as some others epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendations from you you are our epistle written in our hearts known and read by all men clearly you are an epistle of christ ministered by us written not with ink but by the spirit of the living god not on tablets of stone but on tablets of flesh that is of the heart and we have such trust through christ toward god not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves but our sufficiency is from god who made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant not of the letter but of the spirit for so the letter kills but the spirit gives life okay so first six verses maybe we can just look at that so what does he say he's uh, he's writing to them he's saying you know do we need to give commendations commendation letter ab about ourselves to you etc you know he's uh, writing to them because the context is that there are people false apostles who have come and created a lot of confusion they are actually destroying people's lives um and uh, so people are beginning to look up to them and they're not really you know looking up to paul and the team and so on so that's the place you know, from which he, he writes um if you look at verse 2 he says you are our epistle written in our hearts known and read by all men okay so what is an epistle 
what is an epistle? Huh? Letter. Exactly. Yeah. Epistle is a it's a complicated word to say letter. <laughs> okay. So it just means letter. Uh, it's it's something that is written to communicate, right? So it's an epistle. So he's saying you are an epistle, which means that um, you know uh, you actually when people look at your lives, you are like a letter. Okay, you are like a letter, and uh, written in our hearts. Okay, written in our hearts. Your you, your life, your lifestyle, your character, everything is written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Okay, so which means that, uh, in, in other words, that in their hearts they had these people, they carried these people or the lives of these people. You know, they had such a close association in in ministering to them that they carried them in their hearts, meaning they. They thought about them. They prayed for them, and we see that. You know, Paul writes. You know, we are praying for you, etc. And grace to peace and peace among be among you. He just blesses them and so on. So he carried them in their hearts. He was not disconnected from the uh, from the audience, like right, or the congregation to whom he was ministering to. Okay, so he was not like a very. You know, I'm I'm a professional preacher. I need to preach and move on, and move on to the next assignment. You know. Um, it was not that way, you know. It is not a very clinical work that he was doing. You know, he he was engaged in their lives. Right? He knew their concerns. <clears throat> Excuse me. He knew about them. He knew their failings, limitations, whatever. And uh, he carried them. In he's saying, you know, I I carry you. We carry you in our hearts. Not just Paul, but the entire team, right? So, uh, uh, so he says, you are epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. So the thing for us to understand is, okay, <clears throat> you know, pray for the people. Uh, yes, we are praying for what message to be taken, what message to be given. But pray for the people. Pray for the audience uh, to to really get God's heart for them. Okay? To get God's heart for um, you know for the, God's burden in our hearts for the people, right? So uh, that is the first thing, you know, are people written in our hearts? And, um, you know, it, it could change from place to place and, you know, audience to audience and, and so on. But then if, 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 if not, we will maybe come to a place of exalting ourselves and putting down people, okay? destroying people's lives, you know, uh, and, uh, and really being disconnected from people's, uh, people's lives. So slowly over a period of time, the message becomes very, very disengaged, disconnected. You know, it becomes a very, it can be a very academic exercise. It can be a very selfish kind of a thing. It can result in manipulation. All those things happen You know, when we don't have people written in our hearts. Right? When we don't have God's heart for, for the people. Okay. Because, um, yeah, so we can, because we can be hurt, we can be offended. We look at people, you know, um, but when we have God's heart for the for the people, then irrespective of how the behavior is and what they have done, what they have said, we will have God's heart. Right? We will have God's compassion. Right? We will look at people through uh, God's eyes. Okay? So people must be written in our hearts. Okay. So then the second thing that we see is that um, verse three clearly you are an epistle of Christ. Okay, which means that. God has written something. Uh, it's like God is writing a letter to others, and you are that letter. You are that living letter. Okay, you're walking around like a letter, and saying people are able to read you. Like they look at your lives, they and they and they get something. It, uh, it's like <clears throat> I'm sending someone with a message, and it's not a message that they have to speak. Their whole life is a message. The way they live their life is a message. And when people see their lives, they are getting a message from Christ himself. Okay, So it's like, okay, God has spoken to me. How? Well, I see this person's life. right? So that's a powerful thing. right? So he's saying, you are an epistle of Christ. <clears throat> you are a letter that God is writing, that Christ is writing. You are an epistle ministered by us. Of course, we came, we served, we shared the gospel, we established the church, we taught you the gifts of the Spirit, we, we corrected, rebuked everything, ministered by us, 
written not with ink but by the spirit of the living god you know that, that's a very important thing right uh, ministered by us meaning we are human beings of course we use natural means of speaking and you know communicating trying to make you understand discussing everything but he's saying here that not with ink not by any natural method but that this writing this which means he's talking about life change that has happened in them okay life change that has happened in them transformation that has happened in them and he's saying that this was written not with ink but by the spirit of the living god the spirit of the living god the holy spirit has has actually written in your hearts brought transformation in your hearts in your lives and not on tablets of stone but on tablets of flesh that is of the heart okay so yes god uses us as vessels god uses us as instruments to share to speak but it is god and only god by the spirit who can write in the hearts of people okay who can who can really reach the depths of people's lives and write in the hearts of people okay so that's that's something that he's saying you are an epistle of christ your life transformation it speaks volumes people see you and they get a message it's like jesus speaking to them yes how did that happen we ministered we came we shared we ministered right but it's not through any of our means our reasoning or our wisdom it is by not so he's saying it's not by ink but by the spirit of the living god you know we use ink to write and right? it's a natural thing a natural element use ink to write but he's saying no this was written on the tablets of your heart and that kind of writing no human being can do but by the spirit of the living god like right? by the holy spirit right okay and then he talks about um sufficiency right verse verse 5 um says not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves but our sufficiency is from god okay and who also verse six who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant not of the letter but of the spirit um and we so he's saying that we are our sufficiency comes from him which means our capability uh, our ability everything comes from god okay so you know if you look at paul and, and the team the kind of things that they did the kind of churches that they established um uh, you know it's it's amazing right if you look at the missionary trips and you study are you studying the book of acts now are you next semester is it you are you you finished already okay paul's journey and so it it's really um, it, it's it's amazing you know at that time with the kind of resources with the lack of communication you know all that so much was accomplished and he's saying this is the secret he's saying that uh, you know not that we are sufficient of ourselves but our sufficiency is from god so they realized that they understood that and they were dependent on that right so be uh, he has made us sufficient as uh, ministers of the gospel of the new covenant and uh, not of the letter but of the spirit so he's saying okay this is the new dispensation we're not bringing the law here anymore it is the ministry of the holy spirit and the spirit gives life right and so the letter kills but the spirit gives life he's talking about law and grace and uh, and so we are ministry ministers of the life giving spirit okay then uh, verses 7 to 11 okay let's read through but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of israel could not look steadily at the face of moses because of the glory of his countenance which glory was passing away how will the ministry of the spirit not be more glorious for if the ministry of condemnation had glory the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory for even what was made glorious had no glorious glory in this respect because of the glory that excels for if what is passing away was glorious what remains is much more glorious okay so so he's saying uh, you know we are ministers of the new covenant we are ministers of the life giving uh, the life giving spirit and it not of the law. for for them you know it it made a lot of sense because they were uh, not talking about the law anymore not talking about the you know the do's and don'ts anymore but they're saying 
the Holy Spirit actually written the law in your hearts. And so where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom now, liberty. And um, and and so he's saying that it's it produces life. Right? There's no more death. There is this life-giving spirit. So we are the ministers of that new covenant. And he's here he's contrasting, you know, uh, between the old and the new. And he's saying we are ministers of the new covenant. And if the min is a, you know if the ministry of death, like meaning that it was the law brings death because nobody could adhere to the law, and uh, everybody understood that okay. If, if I broke one thing of the law, then I'm breaking the whole law. So therefore, the wages of breaking the law is death. So that's why it's called the ministry of death, right? So if that was glorious, meaning that whole law was given, Moses brings, you know, he's from the top of the mountain. It's, it was engraved on stones. So that's why he's saying, you know, it was glorious in the sense that Moses' face was glowing and it was a fading glory. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? Right. So this is the new dispensation. It's even more glorious. So he wants us to, you know, as ministers of the New Testament, to come to that realization. Okay. So we are ministering the gospel. We are in a dispensation that is even more glorious. So, you know, how does it change your ministry? You know, how does it change your ministry? Um, so your whole expectation, right? your walk of faith, everything changes. Right? So uh, you know, if if I still believe that, okay, I'm I'm we might say, okay, I'm in the new dispensation, but are we really ministering according to that? Right? In the sense, you are actually partners with God. You are co-laboring, you know, with Christ. Uh, in fact, uh, he is doing the work, and we are, we, are, we are privileged to be partners, God, in the sowing and the reaping, uh, and the watering, and so on. So, if if we have that understanding, right, and if we really allow the Holy Spirit to work in and through us, right, so you know, there's no limits. Right? There's no limits to. Um, you know the, the the gifts of the spirit being operational in our lives. There's you know there's so much freedom. So that is what he's talking about. He's saying that you know it's so glorious. If the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory, right? And then in verse twelve it says, therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Okay. So um, so this perspective or uh, this shift in thinking is what every New Testament believer uh, should have. Okay. So when we look at everything that has happened in the old, we know it's a it's a type and a shadow, and we know that yes, that and so much more is possible, right, in the new dispensation. So we need to have that mindset. Okay, um, and so it is. So he's saying, you know, we we have we use boldness of speech because we have so much hope because we know that this is a even more glorious ministry that we are called to, right? That we are called to uh, be in. So, um, so that you know that gives so much hope, that gives us faith, and uh, you know all the weariness and everything is taken away because it is not it is not our strength. Yes, God uses us as ministers. But our sufficiency comes from Him, okay. And uh, right through, we'll you know you you'll see that um, you know when we read Corinthians, um, uh, First Corinthians also you know is, is talking about how you know I want you to know the power of God. In First Corinthians chapter two, it says, uh, "And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. And I, for I determined not to know um, anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him." Crucified. Verse five: That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Right. So, you know, all that is possible, and uh, you know, that's that's something that they emphasized over and over again as New Testament uh, ministers. Okay. Right. Um, okay. Just one. Uh, any questions here before we move on to the last one here, last section? Yeah, Nikhil. Oh, question. Okay. Mm, pastor, in verse 
Where's that? Mm. Verse uh, first, I mean, Second Corinthians chapter mm. three, verse six. Um, like, what does it mean? Like when it says, "For the for the letter kills, but yeah. the spirit gives." Life. Yeah. So the thing is this, no? Like, uh, so the letter letter referring to the law, okay, uh, the old covenant. So in the, uh, the uh, when it, when it comes to the law, the uh, the the uh, consequence of not being able to adhere to the law or obey the law is death. Like the consequence is death, and uh, and so that's why we see in Romans that everybody, you know, uh, like everybody has fallen short of the glory of God, right? And so the there is no uh, there there is condemnation. Yes, all these. You know the, all the sacrifices were were for a covering, for a time being, till the next sacrifice, right? So there was nothing that was uh, it was it was resulting in death, right? It was bringing everybody under this whole blanket of saying that you are sinful, that you are saying okay, you are sinful, you cannot make it on your own. So that's the ministry of death that he's talking about. So uh, uh, yeah, so verse six, right? Um, the letter kills. Right? But the spirit gives life, which means that uh, um, now we are in the new dispensation. And if you look at Romans chapter 8, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. That is verse 1. Verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Okay. So, which means that he became the sin bearer. He bore, he took the punishment, he moved it out of the way so that I don't have to, my life does not have to end in death. You know, so, uh, or I don't have to bear the consequence of not being able to adhere to the law. So the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So that's why he says the law, the, the, the spirit, the, li the letter kills, for, but the spirit gives life. He's referring to that, right? Okay. Um, okay. So let's look at uh, you know what are some objectives when it comes to you know sharing the gospel. What can or what are the possibilities? I'm not. I'm not talking about just sharing the gospel, but sharing the word of God. Okay. Uh, One Corinthians fourteen and verse six. Uh, that verse really wraps it up. Okay. So he's, he's actually you know addressing the whole aspect of gifts, but uh, we see this. Um, One Corinthians fourteen verse six. He says, "Now, brethren, if I come to you, speaking with tongues." What shall I profit you unless I speak to you? Okay, and they list down four things: either by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by teaching. Okay, by revelation, knowledge, prophesying, or by teaching. Okay, so revelation we know is an unveiling or unrevealing or disclosing of something that is covered. Okay. Something that we did not see before, but we see it now. Something that is, you know, that was not lit, you know, uh, it's highlighted now for us. So that's revelation, um, an unveiling of hidden truth. So, um, you know, when we speak, uh, I remember, you know, I, this is many years ago, I think the first time I'm actually attending an apologetics workshop, okay, first time ever. And there was this person by name L.T. Jayachandran. Okay. Um, he's retired now, but he still ministers. And I, I remember sitting, and then it was, it was literally like locks being unlocked. You know, like if you can imagine several locks, <laughs> and every time he was bringing the truth, he was sharing. And the first time I heard about, you know, this whole that verse in Genesis, he talks about let us ma make man in our image. He's saying, hey. Jesus was there. The Holy Spirit was there. You know, let us make man. It's not like they came in early, later. It's there, and that was. And I just heard that. It was like, wow, I've never, you know, heard this before. And one lock was open, you know, and and some a door was open. So when there is a revelation, 
okay whenever you minister in the revelation it might be something that you have heard so many times and it's been part of your life but when you when you share that as led by the spirit there is the unlocking that happens in people's lives right so uh, revelation does that revelation brings a fresh understanding revelation brings um, freedom and, uh, and a conviction for people to walk in that revelation you know it just it's exciting because something that they did not understand and did not know now there is a revelation of that and they are able to walk in it now it's like you made a you know i mean it's not you but it's like how you know there was just a forest maybe there were the rocks and but then suddenly there is a highway you're able to go you're able to go to the destination where things were you know kind of blocked maybe there was a mountain whatever now he has a road through the mountain and they're able to go it's exciting it's life giving it's very liberating okay so so when we minister you know this is something that can happen so paul is saying that you know um how will it profit you unless i speak either by revelation so which means that when i speak out of revelation um uh, through uh, or bring a revelation it is going to profit it's going to benefit okay the second thing he sees he talks about is knowledge okay so knowledge meaning spiritual knowledge spiritual understanding right so it need not be revelatory in that sense but it's still knowledge or understanding of the scripture understanding of the word of god uh, or maybe about the attributes of god or maybe something from from the you know history itself or maybe it's a, you know like we said okay we looked at the word study maybe it's about a deeper understanding of the word right so all that um is spiritual knowledge okay so that is also beneficial okay spiritual knowledge is beneficial so he's talking about revelation about knowledge the third thing is prophesying okay so um uh let's read that verse again 14:6 it says how shall i profit you unless i speak to you either by revelation by knowledge by prophesying so what is prophesying again speaking an inspired word right and by inspiration of the holy spirit now it could have a futuristic element to it could be have a foretelling element to it but we know it's edification exhortation and comfort right and uh, uh, that is birthed by the holy spirit so when there is edification exhortation and comfort which comes through the prophetic word it's obviously benefiting the hearer right is benefiting the hearer and uh, and there is uh, literally they can the change can be very drastic it can be like a, like a before and an after picture right before prophetic word after prophetic word i'm sure you would have seen no like some of these i don't we don't see too many of those ads now right um like they used to have you know you take this medicine and then you will lose weight you don't see i think people have gone become wise you know they say they don't put these things now and the, the newspaper you will see you know um and uh, before i tried this method and and it will be on zoomed out picture okay after picture it will be further away before picture will be close you know you know that something is not right but the thing is that the prophetic word it can be as drastic as that right when a person receives that there is when the person receives um, uh, the prophetic word you know like it says verse 3 you were looking at verse 6 but if you look at verse 3 it says he who prophesies speaks edification exhortation and comfort so the prophetic word brings edification there's building up right positive constructive spiritual progress what is the second thing it brings exhortation encouragement right third thing there is comfort okay and i remember like uh, personally like uh, there was one season we were going through a it was a very difficult season as a family like my brother was having a difficult time and he was separated uh he was married separated and uh, no amount of my comfort could actually comfort my parents right because my parents uh, you know come from very especially my mother come from a background where all these things were unheard of right uh, where this was all it was always happening in somewhere some other country here it is happening in our own family right they were so uh, inconsolable and i remember you know um, just meeting this friend of ours who was um, a minister and also a prophet 
So he said, why don't we go? Why don't we just get, you know, uh, let's talk to him and uh, pray. So I remember that, you know, the way they went in when they got prayed for. And the way we left after the prayer. The faces were glowing. Right? I'm not saying the problem was over. The problem was not over. Right? But the prophetic word. Right? Why? Because it brings edification. It brings exhortation. It brings comfort. That's the power of the prophetic word. The the, because the Holy Spirit knows the need. The Holy Spirit brings the word. And His word has power. It's alive. It's living and powerful. Like, it's like a sword, right? So, so I remember that. Every time I think of the prophetic word, I think of that incident. I saw such a change in their countenance, in their face, you know. Um, so, yeah, so prophesying, speaking an inspired word. And what is the fourth thing that he says? Um, how will it benefit you if I speak to you either by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by teaching? Okay, so what is teaching? Teaching is something that takes us from a place of ignorance to a place of learning. Right? From a place of immaturity to a place of maturity. It plays from a takes us from a place of instability to a place of stability again. Right? So it's um, so teaching is something very, very important. And uh, this is again, you know, when we're talking about the scope, you know, we can bring all this. Um, so teaching, establishing people in the word of God. Okay. So we we can't just go by, you know, exhortation is exciting, inspirational, very motivating, right? But what gives or what grounds people and what's what gives stability, just like an anchor or like a foundation of a building, is the teaching, right? Um, again, a revelatory teaching of God's word. And God's word is able to, uh, when, when people are, and when there's anointed teaching, people are built up. Okay, when you see a strong building, you see, you know, uh, some buildings are, you know, you, you walk in and you know that things are not okay. They've used, you know, substandard material. They've used, you know, maybe the switchboard is coming off. And every time you pull the plug, you'll have to hold the switchboard and, you know, pull the plug. And, uh, you know, things like that, right? But when, when you see a solid building, rock solid building, you know, I'm sure you've seen St. Joseph's Law, College of Law. You see the stone. You see, you know that it's not, you know, it's solid, right? You see that they've used good materials. You see that they've got used, you know, good fittings. It's like that, right? When there's a ministry of teaching, when there's a solid ministry of teaching of God's word, the people who receive it, if they receive it, and if they live right, uh, by it, it's so strong. Because it's the word of God. Like, it's the truth of God's word. And... Like we see line upon line, precept upon precept. So, you know, it's it's one layer after another. And this, uh, it brings so much of strength and they are grounded in God's word, right? So, so we see that, you know, when we are communicating uh, God's word, it can have all these different objectives. So it doesn't mean that, you know, uh, it, we, it can, it, it's just one thing at a time, you know. It can be a combination of it, right? It's how... What, whatever the Lord has put in your heart. So it can bring a combination of this. It can be uh, as the Spirit of the Lord uh, you know, places their emphasis. Certain sections of the word can be revelatory or it can be uh, prophetic, inspired word, a now word. Uh, maybe when you're closing, it can be, a, again, it can be a prophetic uh, utterance and so on. So you know, a message can actually bring all this in a combination. Right, just for us to understand that we can actually have all this as uh, ministers of God who communicate the truth. Okay, so we'll stop here. Right. Okay. Thank you. God bless. Okay. See you guys next time. Bye bye.